All right, going to show you the dark and pagan and twisted origins of Halloween. Many, you know, professing Christians sadly don't know the truth about how evil and twisted and dark Halloween is. Going to tell you about the history, the unknown history of this holiday known as Halloween. So Halloween, the holiday that is commonly called Halloween, is actually known as Samhain in the occult, witchcraft, and Celtic paganism. Samhain is an occult tradition based on the Celtic god of the dead. So about 900 BC, there was a very fierce nomadic people that came into the area of what is today known as the British Isles. These nomadic people were the Celts. The Celts were very vicious, fierce, and barbaric, and very, very violent as well. And they had actually defeated military legions of the Roman Empire on two different occasions. They held all the power from about 900 BC to about 900 AD. The Celts dedicated October 29th to October 31st to their god of the dead. These three days were the original Halloween, but the Celts called it Samhain. During this time, Celtic Druid priests held all the power. Marriages, holding official titles in the clans, or attending their religious ceremonies could not happen without the permission from the Druid priests. They held all the power. They were the all-powerful leaders of this, the British Isles during this time. During the night of Samhain, the Druids would gather at these massive, very, very huge, megalithic stone circles, such as Stonehenge, for example, as well as others across the British Isles. These, these giant megalithic stone circles, such as Stonehenge, served as a temple complex and there were actually human sacrifices that occurred at these stone temples. Archaeologists have actually discovered thousands upon thousands of human skeletons under Stonehenge. And you, know, you can only imagine, uh, just under Stonehenge alone, you can only imagine how many thousands of more human skeletons are under all these other stone circles across the British Isles. So knowing all this, it does make sense why the Druids had so much power and control and why they were so feared by the people. They ruled by fear. During the time of Samhain, the Druid priests would meet at Stonehenge and they had with them a giant black cauldron filled with an apple cider like substance. The Druids would go all throughout the countryside to mansions and castles and people who had some sort of nobility. The Druids would walk up to the front door and guess what they'd, guess what they'd yell out? They'd yell out, trick or treat. If the lord of the manor or the keeper of the house cooperated with the druids, the druids would leave you a treat. This uh, treat would be a hollowed out pumpkin, carved with a face. This pumpkin would be lighted and left on the doorstep. That's what you call jack-o'-lanterns. Today that's called you know, putting out a jack-o'-lantern. That's where that practice comes from. This treat was meant to ward off the demonic forces that were active and unleashed that night. If the lord, the lord of the manor would give one of his servants or even his own son to the druids. If a lord of the manor or keeper of the house refused to cooperate with the druids, the druid priests would literally take the blood of a dead body and carve a six-pointed star with a circle around it, otherwise known as a hexagram. This symbol is often mistakenly known as, as being uh, the so-called Star of David. It's mistakenly seen as a so-called Star of David, but it's actually an occult symbol that has roots in witchcraft and paganism. Nowhere in scripture is there any such thing as a Star of David. It's unscriptural. It's, there's no, nothing in scripture about it. It's an occult and pagan symbol. It comes from masonry, it comes from witchcraft, it comes from occultism, it comes from paganism. It's wicked. The Druid priest would do this in order to summon a demonic force against the keeper of the house as a form of punishment for his refusal to cooperate with them. Several hours later, the Druids would meet at Stonehenge, or stone circles across the British Isles, and take these people that they had taken as their sacrifices and put them in cages. The Celtic military, the military, the military I guess, arm of the, of the Druids, of the Celtic people, would go throughout the countryside and would gather up thousands of wicker reeds, and build a giant cage commonly known as the Wicker Man. The Wicker Man was typically about 25 feet tall, and it formed the effigy of a human male. There would be cages running all throughout the Wicker Man. The Druids would throw all the people they had gathered for the human sacrifice and throw them into cages and tie them down. The Druids would, would pick about 12 prisoners that were going to be used as a human sacrifice and line them up in front of the cauldron they had brought up and throw apples into the cauldron. The Druids would offer the prisoners a pardon. If they could get one of these apples in between their teeth, they would be set free on the spot. They would just be set free and then let go. Uh, there were a couple of strings attached. There was a little string attached to these, uh, this pardon. Uh, that string was, if the water of the, the water of the cauldron had basically been boiling for over four hours at that point, had been boiling for four plus hours for several hours up to that point. And when a prisoner would plunge his face and head into the cauldron to grab an apple, his face would be melted away and he would be permanently deformed and disfigured. So there was a, some strings attached to their, 
pardon to give you freedom. They ran the risk of also going blind due to the boiling water getting into their eyes, and also being partially deaf due to the hot water going into their ear sockets and damaging the inside of their ears. This is where that bobbing for apples game comes from. Very, very sick origins. If a person did it successfully, the, the druids would keep to their promise and set him free immediately. If he refused, the druids would literally behead him on the spot. So it was kind of either way, you'd have a problem. This, was, this is the true origins of Halloween. It's a sick demonic occult high holy day for human sacrifice. That's the true origins. You, you know, it seems all innocent, but the things like the jack-o'-lanterns, the trick-or-treating, the apple bobbing, comes from sick origins of human sacrifice and paganism and witchcraft and occultism. Very, very dark origins. This is why no Bible-believing Christian ought to have anything to do with the, it, we could call it Hell's Holy Day, of, you know, Hell's Holy Day of Halloween, essentially. Because that's what it is. It, it's Hell's Holy Day. That's all it is. It's Satan's high day. So, just wanted to tell you, these are the true roots of Halloween. This is the true roots of this, of Halloween, you could call it, of Hell's Holy Day, of Satan's Holy Day of Halloween. So, don't be deceived by, you know, Halloween and say, oh, it's just, it's just friendly for kids. No, it's not. It's a holiday from the pit of hell, and it's Satan's high holy day. Don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.